FMC descents in the 777 are similar to FMC climbs. To fly a VNAV descent, the FMC must first calculate a VNAV path. The first step in calculating the VNAV path is determining the end of descent point. The end of descent point is created when an arrival procedure is entered into the route. It is the waypoint in the arrival procedure with the lowest altitude constraint, usually the final approach fix. The FMC calculates the descent path beginning at the end of descent point and extending backward and upward along the flight path until reaching cruise altitude. The descent path calculation assumes idle thrust and an angle of descent that follows a specific speed profile. The speed profile includes a deceleration from 240 knots to arrive at the end of descent point at 170 knots. A constant airspeed segment at 240 knots from 10,000 feet to the deceleration point. Another deceleration, this time from economy speed to arrive at 10,000 feet at 240 knots and another constant airspeed segment at economy speed from cruise altitude. The FMC assumes economy speed for this segment regardless of the cruise speed used. If a different speed is desired, it may be entered on the descent page. The FMC then calculates this segment based on the entered speed. The point where this descent path meets the cruise altitude is the FMC computed top of descent. With the autopilot, autothrottle, and VNAV engaged, the 777 automatically flies this descent path from top of descent to end of descent. During a VNAV path descent, the autopilot maintains the FMC calculated path. Since the path is maintained, tailwinds result in an increase in airspeed. Headwinds result in a decrease in airspeed from the FMC calculated value. To maintain the FMC calculated descent path, descent winds need to be loaded. To load the descent winds, first display the descent page. Now select the forecast prompt to view the descent forecast page. The descent winds are loaded on the descent forecast page. Similar to the wind pages, the descent wind altitudes are entered on the left, and the direction and speed is entered on the right. If engine anti-ice is to be used, the altitude at which it will be switched on is entered here. Entering the altitude allows the FMC to adjust the descent path for the additional thrust. The transition level compatible with the selected arrival is displayed here you may enter a different altitude if required. Descent winds can be loaded manually or with data link. Now load the data. The winds and thermal anti-ice are now included in the descent path calculation. Note that you did not need to execute the uplink. Now return to the cruise page. Touch the highlighted key. The distance to top of descent is now based on the data entered on the descent forecast page. To perform the VNAV path descent, the crew must reset the MCP altitude prior to top of descent. If the MCP altitude is not reset two minutes prior to top of descent, the message Reset MCP Altitude displays as a reminder. At top of descent, the cruise page changes automatically to descent. The descent page displays the end of descent point and altitude.
the target airspeed, and the speed transition at 10,000 feet. If the MCP altitude is not reset to a lower altitude at top of descent, the airplane continues in level flight. If the airplane continues in level flight too long, it may not be possible to capture the VNAV path. Also, it may not be possible to comply with altitude restrictions in the descent. If descent prior to top of descent is necessary, it can be done very easily in VNAV mode. As with any descent, the MCP altitude must first be reset to a lower altitude. Reset the MCP altitude to the clearance altitude of 9,000 feet. Next, select the descent page. Touch the highlighted key. When the descent page is not yet active, the Descend Now prompt displays. Push Descend Now to begin an early descent. Now execute the modification. The descent page becomes active when the early descent is executed. The Auto Throttle Thrust mode changes to Thrust and the Autopilot Pitch mode changes to VNAV Speed. The airplane descends at approximately 1,250 feet per minute and economy speed. The airplane maintains this rate of descent and speed until it intercepts the original VNAV path. When the path is intercepted, the thrust mode changes to hold and the pitch mode returns to VNAV path. The airplane then follows the VNAV path for the rest of the descent. After passing top of descent, a VNAV vertical pointer and deviation scale display on both NDs showing the position of the airplane relative to the VNAV path. You learned earlier that unforecast headwinds can decrease the descent speed as the airplane maintains the VNAV path. If the speed decreases more than 5 knots, the auto throttle comes alive to bring airspeed back to the FMC target speed. If the auto throttle is not engaged, the message thrust required displays. You also learned earlier that unforecast tailwinds can increase the descent speed as the airplane maintains the VNAV path. Drag required appears if the speed increase exceeds 5 knots. If the speed increases to a limit speed, the page title changes to Active Limit Speed Descent and the airplane departs the calculated descent path to maintain speed within limits. The autopilot pitch mode changes from VNAV path to VNAV speed when the airplane can no longer maintain the VNAV path. If an airspeed other than the FMC computed target speed is desired, it is entered on the speed line and executed the same way as in climb or cruise. MCP speed intervention during descent is also the same as in other phases of flight. In both cases, the autopilot pitch mode changes to VNAV speed. The airplane maintains the selected speed and ignores the VNAV path. Speed and altitude restrictions for descent are entered similar to those for climb. Whenever possible, Descent restrictions should be entered before top of descent. Speed restrictions associated with altitudes are entered on the descent page. Speed and altitude restrictions associated with waypoints are entered on the legs page.
Enter this restriction. Touch the highlighted key. Now return to the descent page. The waypoint restriction entered on the legs page displays here. If there is more than one restriction, the next restriction displays. The restriction displays in magenta when it is the current target airspeed or altitude. Descent Direct displays on the descent page anytime one or more waypoint restrictions exist between the airplane and end of descent. Selecting Descent Direct deletes all waypoint restrictions between the airplane and the MCP altitude. Speed restrictions that are not associated with waypoints are not affected. Waypoint restrictions entered on the legs page are also deleted individually on the descent page with the delete key. Delete the restriction at Dene. This restriction is associated with an altitude rather than a waypoint. Enter the restriction. Approaching 10,000 feet, 240 knots becomes the target speed and the airplane decelerates. Passing 10,000 feet, the speed transition line is removed. Approaching 6,000 feet, 220 knots becomes the target speed and the airplane decelerates again. Passing 6,000 feet, the speed restriction line blanks. Approaching the end of descent point, the airplane decelerates to arrive at the end of descent point at the end of descent altitude at 170 knots. At the end of descent point, the page title changes to Active End of Descent if the descent is not followed by a climb phase. Descent information about a waypoint is available on the Off Path Descent page. Select the Off Path Descent page. On this page, the FMC enters the end of descent waypoint for you, but any database waypoint may be entered. The straight line distance to the entered waypoint is displayed. The airspeed and altitude restriction for the entered waypoint is displayed. Glide slope intercept for 24 right does not have an airspeed restriction. The speed lines are identical to the descent page. Select the display prompt to show the clean and drag circles. The drag circle is white and the clean circle is cyan. Both circles are centered on the waypoint entered in the descend to line. From inside the clean circle and outside the drag circle, the airplane can descend direct to the glide slope intercept point at 2,200 feet. This assumes idle thrust and speed brake extended.
The CDU displays the distance from the airplane to the drag circle. Once inside the drag circle, a direct descent to the descend to point is not possible. The clean circle is similar to the drag circle, except it shows the distance required for a clean configured descent to the waypoint. For this example, the circle shows that a clean descent is no longer possible. The CDU shows the clean descent would have been possible 19 miles back. Turn off the drag and clean circles.